What's up all my musicians out there? So in case you didn't know, not only am I a musician, but I used to be a former accountant. And one thing I have to say right off the bat is that once you start making money from your music, whether it's from streams or downloads or touring or merchandise or however you make money, you're gonna have to pay taxes. As Benjamin Franklin famously said, the only thing that's certain in life is death and taxes. And when you're a musician and you're making money, you are a business. So in this video, I'm gonna give you five huge pieces of tax advice for all musicians. Number one, hire a tax accountant. Now, right off the bat, I wanna say, I'm an accountant, but I'm not your accountant. Everybody's situation is completely different. Even for me being an accountant, someone who knows taxes and everything, I still hire a tax accountant to do my own taxes. Yes, I'll work with him to kind of prepare certain things, but I still hire somebody because I wanna hire somebody who lives, eats, and breathes only taxes. The tax code is always changing, and I want somebody who's 100% up to date on that. Now, I do know there's some tax programs out there like TurboTax and other ones where you can do your taxes kind of on your own. It helps you out. Do not do those because all the tax breaks, the itemized deductions, especially for anyone watching this video, if you are a musician, you're going to be doing write-offs. You're going to be doing itemized deductions and it gets way more technical. It's not just a simple W-2 or something like that. If you are a simple W-2 and you do a typical nine to five job and whatnot, that's a little bit different with TurboTax. But if you are a musician, and I'm assuming you are if you're watching this video, you're gonna have to do a lot more creative and unique things on your tax returns. Always hire a tax accountant. I pay my tax accountant, in case you're curious, $250 to do my return. And I'm telling you that 250 bucks, I get back or save way more than that 250. In a sense, look at it like an investment because if you try to do it on your own and you don't really know what you're doing or use like a simple program or whatever, you might have to spend hundreds, sometimes even thousands if you're doing it wrong or if they're not completely writing off all the things that you could potentially write off. Always, always, always hire a tax accountant. Number two, save receipts for everything. Anything that you buy, always save the receipt for. Now, the big thing under tax code is that anytime you purchase something, in order to write it off, or basically to put it onto your business like music, you have to say it's an ordinary and a necessary part of the business. For example, let's say you buy a van, and it's a tour van, and, and you're gonna be putting all your equipment in it because you're going on tour. Of course, that's an ordinary and a necessary business expense, and make sure you save the receipt to that. If you're buying an iPhone charger, for example, save the receipt, because let's say if you're saying, hey, I use my iPhone to film and record social media, because I'm using it for marketing purposes, that can be written off, right? So always save your receipts, especially because the worst that happens is you go to your tax accountant and you say, hey, I'm trying to write this off or this is my expense. And they say, eh, you know what? Unfortunately, that doesn't really qualify. That's the worst that happens. The last thing you wanna do is say, oh, well, I got this, but I don't have any proof. I don't have a receipt. I don't have any statements that show I purchased it. I purchased it in cash, for example. They're gonna say, well, you could have saved a lot of money by writing it off. Why didn't you have a receipt? Why didn't you have some type of statement or something along those lines? Anytime you're spending money and you're saying, I'm spending this money to go to music, or another big question to ask yourself is would I spend this money if I was not a musician? So if let's say you buy an extra cable for your guitar, would you buy that if you weren't a musician? No, of course you're buying it because you're a musician. Would you buy an extra blah, 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 right? Always try to ask yourself those questions. And at the end of the day, this is where a tax accountant can really kind of look at your receipts, look at what you've paid for and say, okay, this Uber, when you went to the gig from the hotel, you can write that off. But this Uber to go to the after party after your gig, probably not. You probably can't write that off. And this is where they're gonna help you with everything. But at the end of the day, if you save your receipts, they can determine what you can write off and what you can't write off. Number three, miles over gas. Always, 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 track your miles. When you are driving and you're going to a gig, or let's say you're going to a guitar center to buy a new item for music, or you're going to some workshop and you're driving the workshop, track your miles. Under the tax code, when it comes to traveling, especially when it comes to miles, you can either write off the miles that you drive or your gas or how much you're spending in gas. And I'm telling you, you can write off way more from the miles that you drive compared to the gas. And this is something for me that I always track. And yes, I know it can get annoying because you're like, oh, well, I'm driving two miles round trip because Big Lots is right down the street for me and I wanna grab a couple things because I need it for music and I wanna get it on a budget or whatever. Write off those two miles. Now, yes, this can get very annoying. There's a couple different apps like Mile IQ and other ones where you can determine saying, okay, I'm going to my friend's house. 
eh, it's more for pleasure, doesn't really relate to music, I can't ride off those 10 miles. But if I'm driving 20 miles because I want to meet with a potential agent or a manager, those 20 miles you can write off. Or if, like say if I'm driving to some marketing meeting about my music, I can write those miles off. If I'm touring, of course you can write those miles off. Any single time you're driving and the pure purpose of driving is to go to music and to go to your music business, you can write it off. One big pro tip that I actually do is any single time I'm driving somewhere and I know it's related to music or business, I'll actually take out the notes app on my phone and put 16, 20, 17, whatever the number is of the miles, then when I get back to my house, I'll put the miles on like an Excel spreadsheet and put a note saying, going to Guitar Center, meeting with a producer, touring, um, going to a venue to scope it out beforehand, whatever the case is, always track your miles. Number four, save one third of your earnings. Now for a lot of musicians who are part-time, this won't be as applicable, but I'm saying this for everybody. Again, every situation is different when it comes to tax accounting and your finances and what jobs you're doing. But if you are a full-time musician, more likely than not, 99% of the time, you're gonna be paying taxes as opposed to getting taxes back. And if you've never done that before, you can have a huge rude awakening when tax time comes about, you hire a tax accountant and they say, all right, so this year you owe three grand. And you're like, wait, what do you mean I owe three grand? What, I'm getting money back, right? And they're like, no, 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 no. You're now paying taxes because you're in a sense an independent contractor. You don't pay taxes when you get money from gigs and from shows, from downloads and streams. You have to pay those taxes back. So keep that in mind. So I always suggest save roughly about one third of your earnings in your savings. Just do it. So let's say if you make 60K in one year as a musician, save 20 of that in your savings. Now, are you gonna have to pay 20K in taxes if you make 60K as a musician? Most likely not. You're probably gonna have to spend way less than that, but you're way better off having that nice cushion and being like, oh, well, I have 20K in my savings. Eh, you know what, but I'm only spending five or 4K on my taxes because I have all these write-offs. But now you have a nice cushion in your savings rather than you being like, oh, I didn't save any money and now I owe six grand to the IRS. How am I gonna do that? And yes, the IRS actually will have unique payment plans. You can work it out with them. You're paid a certain amount a month or some type of payment plan. But at the end of the day, just make sure you save enough money. Put that in your savings. If anything, like I said, any single time you get a deposit, so let's say you make 300 bucks from a show, 100 right into your savings. Don't even touch it, don't even see it. Number five, consider paying quarterly. Now for me, I actually don't do this. I know some musicians and entrepreneurs who do do this and they love it and other ones who don't. So it's kind of like a tomato tomato situation. If you want, like I said before, when you're a musician, you're gonna have to pay taxes at the end as opposed to getting money back. And sometimes budget wise, this can get kind of tricky if you're just waiting all year being like, oh my God, how much am I gonna owe? Is it gonna be two grand? Is it gonna be six grand? Is it gonna be 15 or 20 grand? You don't know. What you can do through the IRS is actually pay quarterly. So let's say you're like, all right, I think I'm gonna make 60K this year as a musician. You might owe, I'm just making this up, let's say, 20K, probably a lot less than that, if you want to be honest, especially if you have a lot of write-offs. But let's say you owe, actually, I'll just make this easy. Let's say you're going to be owing 16K off that 60K. What you can do is every quarter, you give the IRS four grand every quarter. If you pay more, the IRS will refund you that money. If you pay less, then they'll say, hey, you got to chalk up some more money. So that way, at least for some musicians, I know, and like I said, a lot of other business friends of mine, more entrepreneurs, they actually like this because for them, it's like, okay, every quarter they try to calculate how much they think they're going to make and they pay the IRS what they think they might owe them. So that way it's easier to piece you track your finances. For me personally, I actually don't like that. I'd rather at the end of the year, calculate everything, determine the big one lump sum I have to pay the IRS because taxes are taxes and then just do that. But again, everybody's different, but this can make it a lot easier budgeting wise. And now a bonus tip, do not use tax software. I know I said this on the first point about hiring a tax accountant, do not do it. Like I said, if you are like say a W2 employee, you're paying taxes anytime you get your check and you do a typical nine to five job, this is very different because your tax returns are gonna be super simple and super easy. But when you're a musician and anybody watching this video now, I'm assuming you are unless you're watching this for fun, your tax returns are gonna be a lot more complicated. You're gonna be writing off a lot of more different items. The technicalities of writing stuff off is gonna be a lot more difficult too. For example, if let's say you get a meal when you're traveling, as opposed to let's say when you take a client out and you pay for the meal as a client you know, consultation, those are two different types of meals and two different types of write-offs. 
And so having a tax accountant, having a professional look at your receipts, and hopefully you're saving your receipts, like I said, look at all the expenses that you've had. They're able to determine the best possible way for you to write off the most amount on your taxes. I promise you that the amount of money you're going to spend hiring a tax accountant to look through all your receipts, again, make sure you save them, look through your statements, look through all the expenses that you've had as a musician, you're going to save significantly more money than if you went through TurboTax or another automated tax software. They're not going to be able to write off as many things and know how to write them off in the optimal way as opposed to a tax accountant. Trust me, if there's anything you remember from this video, get a tax accountant, save all your receipts, do not use the tax software, and make sure you're ready for each individual tax year.